All right, so I just bought a bike I've been searching for for over 20 years. And here's the thing, I haven't even seen it yet. Right now, it's pulling across the bridge. We're gonna get our first look at this motorcycle and see exactly how we did. So my dad was an absolute Harley Davidson 45 nut. Over 50 years collecting, he managed to find one great example from every year, except 1951. So I paid a fair price for this bike, and the goal for today is to see, is it actually a worthy example? Can we get the bike fired up and running? And was it actually a good deal? Let's check it out. You must be Keith. Oh, yeah. Thanks for calling. Yeah, Thanks hell yeah. for coming, man. So there she up is. Here. There it is. There she is. All its glory, right? That's right, man. No doubt. Well, cool, dude. Let's get her unloaded. Yeah. I'll use my ramp. It's okay. a little longer than yeah. that one. Looks like a nice bike, you know? It's uh, obviously I hadn't moved in a long time. No telling if it'll run or not, but first glance, right fenders, right gas tanks, right handlebars. A lot of those really hard to find parts for the later oh, yeah. WLs. They didn't produce a lot. Fenders are hard yeah. to find. Those gas tanks, one, two years only. First glance looks pretty good. The horn's upside down. The horn's upside uh -huh. down, yeah, and that's a newer horn too. The late style coil mount frame, so it is a late frame. Late fenders, late gas tanks, all that's the right stuff. Shifter, speedo. You know, it, it's a... It's not they like did, it's They didn't make a whole lot of the 45s, the light bikes in yeah. 1951. Chris has a 50. Uh -huh. This one. That's yeah. here. Oh, man. Well, that's... Yeah, that's that's like a non-factory VIN number. The bike is 51 as it is, but the VIN is... Uh, it's been... Yeah, I don't know if somebody took a set of new old stock cases and just like might have blown this motor up and then put a, a different motor in it. Let's get it out. We can yeah. keep looking it over. Yeah. There we go. Got it. Yep. Okay. We're good. Good stuff, man. Feels nice. Yeah. Bars are straight. Seems like it anyway. Last time it was run was... 92. 92. Roughly, and that's that's why my mom was saying. 32 years. Yeah. Okay, man. Cool. Well, let's get her pushed in and uh, take her back to the shop, man. See, cool. See what it's all about. So let's see. Floorboards have been replaced. Headlights new. You know, later model kicker, all the right kick arm, proper transmission. And like I said, it turns over. I didn't kick the crap Does out it? of it or anything, no, but yeah. Yeah. Clutch is, clutch is slipping a little bit, but yeah. if I tighten that clutch up. Chris, see if you can slap that sucker in third gear. Yep. Yeah, you Turn can feel, yeah, you're, you're gonna yeah. feel it spinning the motor over. Yeah, you could hear it. Yeah. It's got an M16 carburetor, or a 741, so that's an Indian carb. Um, yeah, like primaries, aftermarket. Oh, this stuff's original. The motor was built by some like old dude in Topeka. Topeka? Maybe yeah. maybe Paul Osborne or yes. something like that? Yeah. yeah. If Paul did it, you know the motor's probably really, really smooth. We're gonna bring it up so I can see what those other belly numbers yeah. are. Belly number they, is. They match. Oh, so they are both 39, 1735 17, belly numbers. Um, what do we got here? That's a, oh, looks like from a car. Ain't from oh, yeah, uh, that's underneath the hood? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah here, we'll just <laughs> there you go, stow man. that in my pocket you there. Take stuff <laughs> home. You know, yeah, it's got a lot of, a lot of nice original parts. And yeah. Then some, you know, the, the cases are a bummer. Yeah. Well, I'll end up trying to get it running. Yeah, oh yeah, and heck yeah. And one of the reasons, the things that attracted me to this bike so much is that it was a 1951 Harley WL. They made the WL from 1937 to 1952, and it was Harley Davidson's you know, lightweight small twin. So they got big twins and small twins. They come out with a small twin in 29 and refined it, and then in 37 came out with that WL, which 37, new lower end with the circulating oil pump here. So the big circular, the big difference with the circulating oil pump, extended engine life, extended oil life. So now you've got a remote oil tank up top, circulates down into the, the lower end out of the rear oil line here, swishes around throughout the entire engine, and then scavenge pump down in the bottom acts as crankcase breather and scavenge pump, pushes it back to the oil tank. So big advancement. And I'm looking at this, I'm just realizing that's a 39 oil pump. This likely was a whole 39 bottom end. It's the thing about these motors get swapped. Yep. You know, wheels get swapped, suspension's different. Right. You know, brakes are different. But first glance is that it's a nice faithful example. The lower end is 
uh, an unfortunate circumstance that I guess I'll be on the hunt for a set of 51 cases is yeah, really yeah. right battery box. I mean, all in all, it's pretty cool that he found this bike in a, a couple boxes. Bought it at a garage sale. At a garage, you know what he paid for it? Oh, dude, I think mom said it was like 400 bucks or 500 bucks. <laughs> Well, you're gonna do a little bit better than doubling your money oh, on this yeah, one. Oh yeah, I think so, so a little bit. <laughs> it, yeah, it'll be cool just to see it here, getting used, it running, you know, instead of just sitting. Yeah, I'm glad you called me about it. Yeah. And so it ought to be exciting. Yeah. And probably spend the day, see if we can get this thing running and may as well, let's get to work. Let's do it. So I think the task at hand, Chris, is, you know, one, we plan on getting a motorcycle running today yeah. and that's what we're gonna do. In the meantime, while we're working on this, we'll try and make some phone calls and see if we can't locate a proper year engine. If we did it on the same day. Even better. Even better. It's my goal in the next 45 minutes to have a running motorcycle, so let's go. First task at hand, Chris, compression check. Keith said that uh, his dad was riding this bike and took it home and parked it, and so it should, uh, should Still have compression. I Rode mean, it once, got pulled over. Yeah, <laughs> took it home. Came, and... came home, wife made him park it, bike sat. Here we are 30 something years later. Just go one at a time. Yep, okay. Oh, oh yeah. Sounds like compression yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Good? Mm hmm. The clutch is slipping. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna adjust the clutch. We may as well take the primary cover off, Chris. Okay. And we'll just take that whole thing off and pull all the clutch plates and make sure everything's proper. Maybe I've got the right cover to replace this with, but this is the wrong primary cover altogether. So this is an aftermarket Apaco brand outer primary cover where it takes like the Harley knucklehead or panhead uh, flathead style derby cover area. You get to use the derby cover itself from a big twin. God, those floorboards are terrible. Too. I know, they're, they're so, bad. so bad. You know, I think there's a lot of parts we'll need to replace on this bike. There's a lot, you know, the bones are really good, but I can see there's a lot of chrome plated stuff. Gotta go. New horn, so we'll put an original style horn on there. You know, and it's small things that you know, like this here, if you look at the headlight bracket and it's this tube in there, it's been welded in. Somebody welded that piece of tubing in probably for rigidity. I don't know if this thing cracked once or not, but another piece of seat, gotta go. Primary cover, gotta go. Carburetor, and although we're gonna end up rebuilding this carburetor today, most likely, the carburetor is the wrong carburetor, so that's gonna get changed. I'd change it now, but that carburetor fits that manifold, so I'll have to get new manifold, new manifold seals. We'll rebuild the proper carburetor for it. That's gonna come at a later date, so today we're gonna get this bike running with that carburetor, and when we replace that carburetor, it'll be rebuilt and go on the shelf and wait for the right motorcycle for it. Ooh, brand new primary chain. Look at that, that's kinda gross. Actually, it's pretty new. There's a little dirt in there, and it's pretty new oil. So we'll pull all this out, and let me get my washer. Every single Harley tool kit needs a big washer like that, and I'll show you why. Take your clutch apart on the side of the road, and then you got all this spring pressure to fight. And you got your clutch adjustment here. Wow, that's tight. And you can pull the adjustment out, but the only way to get the clutch apart is to take these three nuts off. So how do you loosen the three nuts? Well, that's what your washer's for. How right? much easier could it be? Yeah, see, now we're already spinning. We've compressed the springs enough to where, there you have it. And it's ready to reinstall springs already compressed. So new clutch. Does not have a lot of miles on it from what we hear. <laughs> That'll all work. I'm not crazy about that outer plate, and that's got that. So if you could go in the clutch drawer, maybe find mm -hmm. a, and it doesn't need the balls on it. Okay. If it doesn't have it, that's okay. okay. Thanks. So we like to run them and we like to ride them. Now this bike's eventually destined for a new engine. Today, 
hoping we can get this thing fired up and running. Uh, we're gonna be out riding it, so that's the whole thing. Take this thing down the road. Kicking it, you could tell that the clutch was slipping a little bit. If it's slipping when you're kicking it, you know, it either needs adjustment or needs to be taken apart. Didn't see anything other than the adjustment that frightened me on this one. Everything looked pretty good. We got one new metal plate that we're looking for, and then take it apart, put it back together, and you know it's gonna work properly, so. For an outer primary here, uh, and it's actually in really good shape. It's a little beat up on the bottom, but it's ugly. And this is so nice. It would be a shame to take that and put it on a clean bike. There's enough chrome on the rest of the bike and this one's in really nice shape. I mean, it's chrome. I'm not a big chrome fan, but it's nice. And it kind of looks like the rest of the bike, you know? Oh, that looks so much better. You see the difference? That's what we're looking at. So, I mean, it, it's got some of the ribbing, you know, but there's pronounced differences. I mean, this being the big thing. I know a 1950 that's got a really nice primary. <laughs> <laughs> you stay away from my 1950. <laughs> little polish. It's got like, my dad used to smoke backwoods cigars. It's got like 20 years of backwoods cigar shop smoke, loft yeah. smoke on it. I like it, man. I like it. We're gonna finish this bike up and not wanna restore <laughs> no it. No wanna restore it, yeah. I probably got a black chain guard. Some of this chrome was driving me away from it, but we got a proper chrome piece now. Yeah. And definitely needs a new horn. Yeah. Handlebars are chrome, yeah. nothing to do with that. Kickstand's gotta go parkerized. Mm -hmm. Generator cover can be chrome. Mm -hmm. You know, these were chrome. We got tail lights chrome. Not a fan of that exhaust, it's the wrong one anyway, and yep. this arm shouldn't be chrome, but other than that, rims are chrome, you know, and I mean, there's, but the engine still needs a new engine. Yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna do a clutch slip test, and by no means does this mean that it's gonna hold under power, mm -hmm. but it was slipping when we were kicking it yeah. before. So I'm gonna just draw a line. Okay, can you hop up there and kick it? Yep. Basket, inner plate, those won't be aligned if you were slow. It ain't going anywhere. We don't have any plugs in it. Yeah. But before it was slipping, we couldn't even kick it all the way through. Great. Primary cover. Okay, so the little stuff though. You Chris got parkerized. Uh, nuts and lock washers back on the floorboard straps. Okay, so the more I'm thinking about this, fender hardware, gas tank hardware, there's so much right with it. You know, there's not even a nut and bolt here. Yep. To, uh, fender mounting hardware on top, pin for the, the seat post, parkerized seat E bolt and washer instead mm -hmm. of just black paint. Probably even have parkerized headlight, headlight bracket bolts there. Ditch some of the chrome. Here, hardware uh, should be parkerized. This should be black, the, the cover. Um, I'm sure I have one, but then we got a chrome primary. So, you know, it's just goes to show you, you can have a clear direction when you start. <laughs> and it just kind of Here we are now, it. kind of conflicted. It's an 80s paint job. Yeah. You know, so it needs done. And yeah. I keep coming back to the engine, you know, and yeah. to, it's gonna take some luck to find this engine. So 1951 WL, Chris said they only made like 1,400 of them. It's rarer than a 36 knucklehead and the stuff like this. The reality is with this, Chris, is that this is likely the power plant that's in it because they blew up the original 51 engine. Yeah, and just got some and replacement yeah, cases. In yeah, it. got or a replacement engine. Replacement cases, replacement engine, and, and put it all back together. Things coming apart. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get it running. Forge ahead. <laughs> the reason we're doing it now is because the one that's on it is definitely not right. As far as the order of operations to get it running, we haven't done any of those yet. <laughs> We're just sitting here and messing with the bike cosmetically, but I promise she will run today. Didn't he, didn't he say that the float leaked? He did say the float Let's leaked. Let's pull the carb off. Yeah. No, That's an interesting, what's that? Carburetor mounting technique. 
these aren't uh, bolts. They're oh jeez. It's and like on this bottom side, like it's threaded through the other side. It's like there's thread sticking out both sides. What that goes to show is how far that the antique bike scene has actually come. And yeah. nowadays you can order that. Yeah, and find the pieces when you this need. This bike was done. It's probably they weren't the most accessible parts, which is why so many of them aren't on the road today. And um, nobody folded the tabs over. They didn't. No. Working on old motorcycles all day long. I mean, what, what more motivation do you need? He gets paid too, guys. Wait, I'm, wait, I was supposed to be getting paid? <laughs> 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 Blew it. <laughs> Carburetor is off. You know what, there's a seat pin mm -hmm. right on that wooden counter behind you, right next to the hardware bins in that pile of hardware right there by the plastic bag. Back to the compression test. All right. Ready? Yep. Yep, yeah. Cool. Excellent. All right. If we got compression, we're not even going to pick the lifter covers up. It doesn't sound clackety kicking it over. Yeah, there's I'm no noise coming. And guess. Now, he said this engine was built by Paul Osborne, is who he thought built the engine. Truett and Osborne and Topeka, those guys have been working on old motorcycles for a long time, since before they were old. Spark Advance cable's not hooked up. I'm going to fish it through to you, Chris. Okay. Ooh. There's not much, yeah. When it's when it's all the way advanced, there's hardly anything there on yeah, coming out. Yeah, and we're gonna need a clamp. clamp. No, we're on points. What's the points got, Chris? Tight. Yeah. All right. Small lobe is front cylinder. Small right. lobe is the front cylinder. Yeah, we're on the rear. When we're talking about lobes, guys, right on the distributor here, as you kick this over, or circuit breaker, as a lot of guys like to call them, when you kick the engine over and the rotor spins on the distributor, or the shaft, I should say, on the, and see these two bumps right here, uh, front cylinder, 315 degree firing order on a Harley Davidson. 360 degrees, obviously, in a circle. Front cylinder, they're 45 degrees apart. Front cylinder fires, 360 minus 45 gets you your 315. Rear cylinder, well, you got 360 degrees plus 45. So you're a whole, um, right? Let me think about it. <laughs> All right, we're set. Okay, so we're set. Do we check the timing or do we run with it? Let's run with it. Yeah. Uh, do you want to put auto lights in here or put these? Let's put some new plugs yep. in it. Yeah, good call. Some of you guys have asked, auto light 386 is what we use in most of these bikes because they work. We won't run a set of champion plugs. I would use a stick for a spark plug. <laughs> 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 Wait, these sunglasses all the way. <laughs> There we go. We're advanced, so pull it back to advance. And let me give you a little there, and then try and tighten her down, I guess. Figure we got to get this one tightened. Carburetor over here. Junky parts out of the way. This is a disaster. Now, he said that the float was leaking. I'd be willing to bet there's a rash or potentially even a cork float inside of this float bowl here. Leaky float, bike never run right, makes a mess, potentially causes a fire. Easy fix. It's an easy fix. 741-1, Chris. Be interesting to look in the military book and figure out if there's some sort of difference. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Fork. Yeah. No spring. Holy cow, jeez, holy smokes. I think we got more problems than just the <laughs> leaky cork float. Look at this, he's got a plastic bag here. Actually, it looks like never run. It did run. 
Ran from the cops. <laughs> it did <laughs> run from the cops. Oh, God, that ain't moving. So is that plugged up and gummed up? Is it worth just changing it to an M51 right away? We'll find out next time, Batman. I don't really believe that this float bowl will ever even seal in the first place. If you look, they've got a nut here. It's supposed to be got this little Allen bolt here. That's a pipe plug normally in it. Looking at it though, just about every part on that float bowl is worn out. This is a shame that that's so tight in there. I don't know if I have a manifold, Chris. That's my main holdup. I don't have a manifold like this right here. Looks like we got a manifold. That means I have to build another carburetor. And I don't think it was nickel plated. It appears the only M51 I have is nickel plated. Cause Chris took my other one. But it's running great, if that makes you feel any better. This is the one. Oh yeah, this is the one. We're gonna build this one. Okay. First thing to do before I even go building this is try and install this manifold. Oh man, this is kind of what I didn't want to start changing up a bunch of parts for something that's gotta come apart anyway, but you know what? There may be a reason why this also has not been put on a bike. Yeah, I thought so. You know, when it comes to a motorcycle, its static appearance is one thing, being able to pick out what's right and what's wrong with how it operates is a completely another thing. Engine's a big deal but I think I can find one. We get this bike running today and it does the things it's supposed to, I consider it a win. Fair price on the bike, some added expense here with the engine. But if that transmission works properly, it's a big plus. Yeah. I'm gonna rebuild it anyway, but to take it apart and know you're dealing with good stuff, yeah. big plus. Uh, wheels, brakes, big plus, front end, gas tanks, all of that stuff, if, if everything works right, you know, really operates like it should, big plus. I think this is one of my least favorite tank emblems because it almost gets lost you know with the chrome like yeah you, well the only thing worse than that is 54. yeah because i mean from a little from further back like if you didn't know it said harley davidson you'd almost be like what, what, does what does that say yeah right well harley davidson himself came up with that <laughs> oh harley <laughs> oh, harley <laughs> harley davidson himself came up with that emblem all right See if we can install this manifold, of course, with new nuts. Yeah, but the thing about this bike, you know, is that just because the, the VIN number is a non-factory stamp VIN number, it's not necessarily a problem. You know, from a value standpoint, it's always gonna be the best bike it can be with a real genuine factory stamped engine in it. But the thing about these motorcycles, they were used hard, just a 45 cubic inch engine, engines would blow up, grab some new old stock replacement cases off of a Harley Davidson dealer's shelf, have them build you up a motor, and they're gonna stamp your very same number in there so you don't have to get your bike re-registered, retitled. Doesn't mean that there's anything suspect about the bike, um, you know, we got a a great clear chain of ownership on this motorcycle since it was new, which is one more reason the bike was a nice, attractive motorcycle to me. Anytime you can dock some, document something all the way back to the beginning, that's a big plus. Gaps in chain of ownership really can kind of, you know, throw some uncertainties in the equation. You know what? I'm gonna call Matt, see if he's got any engine cases. I think the answer is no. <laughs> Come off Your call has. <laughs> Are you getting this? <laughs> is this? Is this how Mr. Harley taught the employees? How to... So actually, I think I'm gonna bead blast it, and we'll just repaint it black real fast. Do you want me to go ahead and take this other manifold off? Do it, right. yeah. So this side is the whole spinning. Yeah. No. Yeah, that whole nut. This one came off, but this one that one as came off. You, yeah. How on earth? Oh, my God. that's so bad. No, 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 no. Maybe it doesn't run today. So there's these cylinders have an intake nipple, um, and then the manifold has a an intake nut. So the nut, uh, 
this is exactly what happened to the manifold that I literally just removed. You're gonna have to stick something in that manifold at the end of this okay. to keep it from spinning. Yep. And I don't wanna have to replace a cylinder on a motor that's gonna come apart, apart anyway. I'm gonna have to find another nipple. I don't see how it does run. There it goes. Well, there's good news, Matt. What's that? Brian just pulled up. <laughs> Brian's here, okay. Chris is gonna get the manifold. <laughs> no, Chris, come on, dude. Actually, this is something you're gonna wanna see too. Big surprise, something coming to wheels through time. It just pulled into the parking lot. In just a second, we're gonna be unloading one of the, if not the earliest known American motorcycles, period. Our buddy Brian's here from Connecticut. Incredibly excited to get this bike unloaded. It's gonna be here at Wheels Through Time. Make sure you guys come check it out. 1901, so let's get it unloaded. Stand up. Yeah, and I thought I was gonna- oh, Wow. Tiny little hub on this bicycle. Actually, and, and Keating was is. famous for Victor hubs. Okay, that's what this is. Yeah, they're straight, straight pull hubs. They're Victor hubs. Wow. Oh, oh so cool. it's a uh, what do they call that now? It's called a fixed, fixed gear. Yeah, fixed. Where, where it fixes. doesn't. Uh, yeah, there's no. I got gotcha. you. Okay. They spin yeah. constantly. They spin constantly. There's no free wheel. Oh my God. This. Oh, this is a men's. This that's a woman's. Cool. Yeah, the so original the, paint, unrestored. That's the it's one all, with the original head badge. Well, look at that, it's aluminum, so. Yeah. And this is Keating too, Matt, the, uh, the, 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 the swept. The, uh, the, the curve. So, th so what I noticed in the photo, because I've never seen this bike in person. Well, you're gonna look at it now. There's, what's the arrangement between the, wow, look you at that. You guys got it. Yeah. We got it. Oh, Actually, uh, grab one of those stands. Wow. Yeah. It doesn't see the light of day too often. Amazing. Yeah, just put it right down. Here's my philosophy. Back in this era, you know, they were motor bicycles. So they had a bicycle diamond frame and they would make a, they'd have an attachment motor. This is not a motor bicycle. No, exactly. This look, is look a this. motorcycle. Motor the frame cycle. is made into it. Yes. Yeah, com completely of its, own, of its own design. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, it's, and it's Keating's manufacturer. He made one his own of the power things plant. that I thought was the coolest about this, because typically of all these early bikes, you've got this primary drive system and a secondary drive system, and then you've got your pedal start mechanism. And this is like Simplistic. all in one. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a clutch style mechanism that disengages the drive, and you can see underneath here. Oh, that's, wow. that's part of the mechanism that's what that actuates it. Yeah, right. It actually it works from here too. But when you wow. back pedal, no way. It activates, it does and that's a brake. Spoon brake. Yep. So when you back pedal to, to brake, it disengages the drive. That is mind blowing. How well that works. Simplistic. Yeah. This drive system is way advanced. It's advanced is the word I'm looking for compared for, to what for, for everybody else is for 1901. Supposedly they made a 1902 and that engine was within the seat tube. It was mounted within the seat tube. I like this yeah. design better. It's a survivor. You know, it's um I probably have some tires that size. Those are those are like solid tires. What if we look for a set of tires? Like if you wanna, to feel free. I have some black solid tires that I think are that size. Not solid, but they're, it's like an inner tube. Yeah. But it's a tire. But they're pneumatic. Yeah. 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 That thing is really cool. One of our earliest American motorcycle companies. Only one in the world that exists. It's crazy just to think about serendipity that just, all right, more one of a kinds coming on display here at Wheels. The world's only three cylinder. No, no. Harley first. David stuff. The world's, world's first. first. Three cylinder Harley Davidson shovel head. Feeling. Something looks different here. You, no, I tell you, what, you, you'd be surprised how many people didn't pick up on it. Oh man, I've seen pictures of this bike for years. No, when, when you got the road dog, yeah. that's what told me that, hey, Matt, Take a look at this. Just to even figure out wh where you're gonna fuse them together, where you're gonna. Yeah. Well, and look at the spacing. Yeah, it, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I'm looking down here where the cylinders come together. Dang. The, um, this is the way Bob pretty much had it. Can't 1800, remember. nice. <laughs> Which nice. is what it is. Yeah, of course actually, it is. Also, I think down in here, look at that. 
Nice. 101 cubic inch, I think it is. So actually, how did he do that? How did he? Can I try kicking it just to feel oh, yeah, what feel it's free. like? Got more else coming out too. <laughs> right? I know that sound. Oh, too cool, man. Well, come on inside. I want to show you around. Yeah, yeah. And I, want, I want Vicky to get a let's, look. Let's uh, bring this in straight away. Let me uh, see if we got some tires. I held Stretch it up. Them. It looked real. It looked right. It's it's up to you. It's up to you. I don't want you to put any investment into it. All right, we'll put them on for display and take them off. Whatever. Well, if they fit, I, I, they'd probably probably be yours. How can you take them off? Where'd you find those? These are period. Found them too. in a teen show. Oh yeah, man, they're the ones. Be pisser. You, you never had tires on them before, have you? Never. Hold never. That. Yeah. Never. I think it'll fit. Are they built the same? Yeah. But look at that. Doesn't that look like it fit? It wouldn't take much to take that off. It's just well, here's the trick with these things are. I tell you, just loosen it up, but there's no slit, so you gotta. Oh. Do you want to do it real quick? Yeah, we could do it. Okay. She's out. She's out. That looks like it's gonna go. It sure does. Baby you ready? bites. Oh yeah, yep. you're over. Come on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Boom. Holy smokes, uh, dude. <laughs> How long have you been waiting to put tires on this? I did look at one point in time. I did look and they're like three, four hundred dollars per tire. And, yeah. and I, at that time, I probably measured them, but I don't remember what it was. Wow. But they weren't maybe as original as these are. No, they sure aren't. That is unbelievable. Been Amazing. Right They've been that waiting there. Shot. These suckers here will still hold air, too. 100 years. Okay, 100 plus, 100 plus years. Okay. Look at that. We got Clarence. Clearance, Clarence. That's unbelievable. That is unbelievable. <laughs> now we've got to do the rear. The who? Uh, open rear dropouts. Yeah, so it should yeah. be a lot easier. Actually, you should be there already. Yeah, beautiful. So, Chris, you're going to walk it on with me. There's a flat spot in the rim there. Oh yeah, this one's pure wood, huh? Yeah. We so we want to be really gentle with it. I think you guys got it. I do believe. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. Hey, you freaking, you put your hands right on these things when they pulled in. <laughs> it's like, you knew exactly where they were. These were in, uh, as soon as I saw the rims, uh, these tires have been floating around for years. <laughs> and I knew right where they were sitting. Uh, Wow, 110-year-old tires on a 120-year-old motorcycle. <laughs> That's phenomenal. And nothing broke. Nothing broke. I don't hear any spokes. <laughs> <laughs> it's better me than the bike. Trying not to mar up any nuts and bolts either. Well, that comes with the territory. It's not your first rodeo. Now you can roll it. Look at that. <laughs> it's on its own wheel. <laughs> right, guys, the bike's back up on wheels. That's what it's all about here. Wheels Through Time is another one preserved back on rubber. So incredibly excited. I feel like I got a little momentum. We're going to get back to work on a 51. So there's a little bit of a bright spot to the there's day. There's a bright spot to the day. We've got a 120-something-year-old motorcycle on display at Wheels Through Time, you guys are gonna dig it. I'm not telling you where I'm gonna put it, so when you come visit, you guys are gonna have to find it. But we're back on the intake manifold saga. This is now my least favorite part of this motorcycle, so. It should be getting close there. It should be, yep, there it went. Yeah. So, there. yeah, where the hole was on the cylinder, you can see where the hole is in the nipple there, so that should have been, had a rivet put in it to hold that in place once it's installed. Exact same thing on these. Okay, this is what we're dealing with here. Plumber nut manifold on any Harley Davidson up through maybe mid 50s anyway. And there's a brass ferrule. And then this nipple here, which is currently screwed into this, you saw me banging it off the other manifold. <laughs> Nipple screws into the head, you rivet the nipple into place, it's a crucial seal. That one's got two drilled in it. I know, they, they reused, reused the original it. one, yeah. and then that new rivet came out. So now our task is to find an original, probably a new old stock nipple, and then there's the getting it in part. Well, are we dead in the water? 
Looky there, there's your 1950 spare parts catalog. For 45 solo and survey cars, this would be up to date for this motorcycle that we're working on right now. And if I'm not mistaken, we're looking for this part. 1112-32. Uh, 32 inlet nipple, 32 to 50, except... You gotta be kidding me, dude. It's because it's... Gear 50 here, so we're 50, yeah, 51 we're next year. Right. But it's through 50, because there is no 51 yet. Yeah. To the shop. I'm gonna wanna pull the head off and find out what size the manifold is. Oh. What? It's a 51 motor. No way. But it's a G motor. Oh, Survey car engine. Oh. Man, it's a G. You can't use a G serial number. It's the wrong. It's all about having the right engine in there, and that's. Oh, don't tell me. Oh, it's a G too. They're both 51 Gs. No, that's a 61 G. Oh, see, I thought that I had a DC carburetor. I thought that was later. So we said 11, 12, 11, 12 32. Yeah. And we need a DL cylinder. God, I know right where they're at. So when I said you I knew right know where they were, right where they are, what I meant was right where they should be. Right where they should be. It's Matt. It Olson? Yeah. All right. Hey, dude, what are you doing? Uh, nothing much, just uh, getting ready for night shift, so. Sounds like fun. Did you ever get your K model going? I, I think I got it licked, so. Cool, man. You don't have any friends with any 51 WL cases, do you? Gosh, damn it. I am looking for a set for you. We'll find them, but I've, I've never even seen a set. I've seen 52 WLA cases, but I've never seen 51 WL cases. Yeah, and they made less than they made less WLs in 51 than they made 36 knuckleheads, so it's not going to be easy. It's a, it's a really rare bike. Sure thing. Well, keep me keep me in mind if you find any 51 WL cases. I have a 5145 motor sitting in the swim shop, but it's a G motor. Oh, bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll send out a couple of messages tonight when I take a break. So. I appreciate it, man. I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Yeah, bye. Last place. Oh, I promise. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Well. Find it? Good thing you caught it. <laughs> Is the thread on? Too big. No! I'm not uh, athletically gifted. So the fact that I caught that looking in <laughs> up is... It's different? Yeah. What about this one? <laughs> oh, nice. Same there. This is the one we need, though. It's not been drilled, so it is brand new. Ooh, the threads are nice. They're not worn out at all. To install it, I only dropped it once, so the threads are not that bad. And in order to thread this into the cylinder and get a perfect seal, we're gonna have to make a tool to be able to drive this thing in. Uh, otherwise, you got no ability to get it tight. So what we've gotta do here is make a spacer to effectively take up the space here and screw this tight against the nipple itself. We'll use the hex nut to screw in the nipple to the cylinder, drill it, rivet it, and then we'll be able to back this nut off. Hopefully that's enough to make everything seal. So not an easy fix to do on the motorcycle, but we're gonna give it a shot. So we're gonna see how it threads. And... Doesn't seem like it's hanging up anywhere. No, it sure doesn't. What's it looking like here? How close are we? It, oh, man. yeah, it's, it's right there. It's right there. Okay, Chris, mm -hmm. see if you can just start torque it down and see if you can see the, the inner threaded piece move any. At some point, it should just... Yeah, it just... Yeah, it's moving. It's moving? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's slow, but it is moving. It is moving? Yeah. Take a look and see what we're working with. I think it's tight. Okay. Oh, my old... <laughs> 
old drill on the story. I lost this drill for four months. I know one of you guys commented on you hadn't seen an electric drill used in years. Where did you find it, Matt? That's enough. <laughs> I think I probably looked in my truck at least a hundred times. And I really think that what I think happened is that Chris lost it and put it in my truck when he did find it. We know I mean, I'm not gonna say that wouldn't be a good idea, but. Uh... <laughs> so we've got it plugged, right? The intake valve is closed. All right, now we need the rivet. Okay. Oh, that's a good fit. It worked. Okay. How much is sticking through? Um, Not much? About uh, maybe an eighth of an inch. Oh God, we are gonna weld it. Uh, 51. He poured in it too. It does have a bunch of port work done. Yeah. But it doesn't have any rivet in there. I know. Trouble. I'm not gonna ask you how many kicks. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'll rebuild the carburetor. Mm -hmm. If you install the intake manifold. Yep. High and low speed needles. Some of these guys are reproduction parts that we get from the carburetor guys, the linker guy in Vermont. And some of those reproduction parts and without, you know, we try and do as much original as we can here at the museum, but parts like this, you have to have new stuff. Brand new spring specifically made uh, for the main nozzle, holding the main nozzle in place. Uh, new nitrofill rubber ducky float, impervious to all the modern fuels, never sinks. Of course, a new float bowl gasket. Brand newly machined needle and seat here, which is your complete seal on your float bowl. So you guys have seen me do it a dozen times. You lap them in here, looking for suction on the lip. That one we're gonna, didn't take much, just a dink. Okay, so clean this up so you guys can see what we're actually doing here. Might use one part off the old carburetor. So let's pull this out. And we got the detent ball here. Hold it in place with the lever itself. Okay, so there's our choke plate assembly is looking pretty solid. One half, one, one and a half to start. Three and a half and one and a half. All right, carburetor is rebuilt. Yep. And we got our main nozzle spring. So Robbie. let's, yeah, my concern with the float bowl, I mean, if you look at this style float bowl, you know, the only hole in the bottom of that float bowl is for the bottom of the body of the carb to go in. The bowl goes over the body of the carb. And you've got a brass crush washer here. Uh, that makes the seal nut right here. Well, that's all well and good here, except these float bowls, and a lot of them did, they had a drain plug. Drain plug is a fine thread, and there's a plug that goes in. Well, this has been stripped out. They've run, or they've just slid a bolt in, an Allen bolt, and ran a nut to tighten it down. So there's really no telling if this is gonna seal. Go ahead and give it a try, but the odds are we're probably gonna be taking this off. And if he used one of those red fiber washers here, mm -hmm. question that, hopefully yeah. it's pretty, it's it's fine. This needle and seat's seat, man. I think we run with it. Seat's better than that one does. And that one's 80 years old, so. Do a little bit of float setting. Bolt this sucker back on. Quarter inch. Looks like a quarter inch. Top of the float, quarter inch from the top. Beautiful. Float is to the front. Take this UL out, jump the fence. Just like in the Great Escape. You know, we're 
we're getting really close on this bike. I mean, we've got battery, we're gonna run through the electrics, we've rebuilt the carburetor, uh, put the new nipple into the front cylinder intake port, manifold's on, carburetor's getting bolt on right now, we'll hook up the throttle, a spark advance is hooked up. We got some small things left to do over the next six, eight months. Hopefully you guys will be tagging along with us as we correct some of those. We're gonna see how it runs now. You guys remember us mentioning it has the wrong engine in it. We're gonna see just how long that wrong engine's gonna stay in it. If it runs good, buying this thing maybe six months. If it runs terrible, tomorrow we're yanking it out. Yeah, let's go ahead and do battery, man. We're look gonna at, use the household wire still? Yeah, look, at, look at what they got for a ground wire. Did you see that? Well, it's not. It's, it's the hot and the ground. The, oh, that's real yeah. that's the, safe. The hot wire is put on with a piece of twisted copper wire. It's kind of a work of art. You could call it that. If by work of art you mean horrible, a cobble job. Cobbler. Cobbler. Somebody say cobbler. <laughs> so throttle set up, spark advance is set up. Chris is hooking up new hot wire. Adjustment to do. Check this and see if it comes on. Go for it. Got light. Dash lights. Headlight. Let's no wiggle headlight. high low beam a little. A little corrosion. Pop the distributor cover off. Yep. And let's see if there's spark at the points anyway. No. Okay, now try. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, nothing else is working though. Hold on. Wiggles. Oh yeah. There, yep. there we it's go. Just a bad, there's just a bad. Yeah, it's the switch. Yep. Okay. Tail light? Yep. Brake light? Kind of weak. Yep. Yeah. Brake light. Yeah, battery's pretty low. Do we got any guesses on? How many kicks it's gonna take? <laughs> you don't like my guesses. Come on, you you got the most accurate guesses as of late. <laughs> if any of you guys know about a 51 Harley Davidson WL motor, give me a call. So far, we're just hitting dead ends, but we're not gonna stop trying until we dig up the right engine for this motorcycle. In the meantime, we're gonna hear this thing hopefully in just a couple minutes or a couple seconds. Fire up and run. Fingers crossed, you know, rumor has it when we bought the bike anyway, the fella told me that it was a really reputable engine builder that did the work. Now that work was 30 years ago, so two factors there. One, did the guy that built it actually know his stuff? If it's who they said, I think he did. Uh, but at the same time, we're talking 30 years. This thing's been sitting since 1992, so 32 years. It is just a Harley 45. We've had them sitting way longer. You guys remember the Eeyore bike? I mean, that thing sat for 50 something years. So we're gonna go ahead and put some fluids in this thing and see if we can get it fired up and tuned. And then of course, as you guys know, the end goal is to ride it. And the engine can run right, but all the other systems have to operate uh, as they should. And uh, first glance is that we've got most everything taken care of, uh, but we're not gonna know until we try and slide that thing into gear and set off under its own power. Look at that fancy thing. See that? First time using this glass funnel that our guy Norm, hey Norm, if you're watching, uh, sent in and donated. Norm sends us cool packages all the time. Perfect example, come check this out. Anybody know what these are? Does anybody know what those are? If you know what they are, leave it in the comments. Hang out for a few minutes. I'm gonna make you wait for the answer. But Norm sent us these, I use them every day. Uh, oh God, that's a clue. All right, we are very close, to this. You guys got any ideas how many kicks? Write it in the comments, let us know what you think. My guess, I'm not gonna guess yet. I'm gonna wait. I'm not guessing yet. Throttle works fine. Spark advance works fine. We get some air in the tires. Bring this bad boy down hole punches from number one to number 12. <laughs> Ken didn't even know what these were. I actually, for the first time in my life, showed him something new he hadn't seen before. Isn't that right? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> 
Doesn't appear to be leaking anywhere. All right. So now we have gas. Ready? Yep. We're gonna go ahead and guess for a number of kicks. I'm gonna say two live kicks. I'm gonna say four. Four live kicks. Ken says four. seven. Seven. Low. I was told I needed to be optimist. Optimist. <laughs> <laughs> Two. We got any gas yet? Yeah. We got fuel? Yeah, we got fuel. Let me give it one more. Two yeah, more. Got now plenty. we got, you got plenty I'm on two live, what'd I say? Two live kicks or one? Two. One. Ooh, man. Feels like there's a lot of oil in the lower end. Come on. Oh, oh, there, there we, we go. go. Okay, a little bit of retard. Okay, live. Circulating oil, starts good, revs, excellent. Yeah. Very, very snappy. responsive. Very, yeah. Let's see if it I goes into one, gear. One bolt fell off already. So I guess all after that, just see if it goes into gear, right? If we if it goes into gear, which you know what, I'm gonna take it outside. I rolled it backwards all that way, it went down a half a mile. Yeah, you remember this Ferris Bueller's day off that he when he drove the Ferrari and tried to run it in back in reverse? <laughs> It sounds good when you open it up out there. It's fast. Yeah, well, you can hear it, man. It's fast, man. You can hear it. Yeah. Wow. Here, take it for a spin, man. It operates really good. Rear brake's a little soft. Right. Man. Yeah. Okay, so engine, not the right engine or not, I'm happy. That thing runs like a rocket ship, it operates really well. I'm impressed, um, too cool, man. If you guys are digging what you see, make sure you check out both of these videos. We'll see you next time. That's a lot of power for a 45. Yeah, for a 45, it goes good, man. Yeah.